Serious, what was your first traumatic experience? When I was 5-6ish my drunken dad and piece of off mother were fighting again. They fought quite often. This particular fight my dad was extra drunk. When I was going to bed they bursted into my room. My dad was holding her on the ground with a knife to her neck threatening to kill her. 10-ish minutes later my dad is in the garage with one of our many guns to his head. Loaded and safety off. My brother both my sisters and I were watching as he almost shot himself. They aren't together anymore. I was 4. My family went to visit my grandparents. They had an in-ground pool. Everyone was outside having a BBQ. I was walking around the edge of the pool and looked down and saw my little brother had fallen in the pool right behind the ladder. He was only one. So he obviously couldn't swim. I lay down on my stomach and looped my arms under his armpits. Pulling his head above the water. But just barely. He was heavy. He was fully dressed and I was only four. I screamed and screamed for our mother. It felt like forever but someone finally noticed me and all the adults came rushing over. No one ever talked to me about it afterwards. I was terrified of water for a long time and I'm still very overprotective of my little brother. My dad beat the shti out of me when I was 7 years old because I told him I didn't like him singing to me when he woke me up for school. I'm about the same age he was when he did that to me and I can't imagine having the arrogance to do that to a child. Edit. Some people have commented on my use of the word arrogance. There are a number of terms that might describe his personality. And pretty much every suggestion you all have given would fit. I chose that word specifically because it highlights the fact that he believed he could get away with it and expect that our relationship would be fine and dandy. Coming up on 2 years in a few months a homeless man committed suicide by kneeling in the middle of the road. It was 12. 30 am I was on my way back to work from lunch he was wearing all black and I didn't even have time to press the brakes because there is little to no lighting near the port I work at. My guess is he was hoping for one of the many semi trucks that go down that road but instead he got me. Still don't like driving at night but I'm the night guy and I still have to drive that road. I saw a family of 6 get into a bad car wreck on the interstate Easter Sunday of 2nd grade. Got a good 5 seconds view of a contorted body of a woman who got thrown out a windshield. Short burnt into my brain and desensitized the duck out a 7 years old me. Fast forward 10 years and I watched a classmate of mine get smacked by a pickup truck in front of my house while he was on a bike. Ran to him and he was obviously already dead and his abdomen was basically jello. I stayed with him until the ambulance took him. When I was 11 years old my best friend passed out a swim meet. Me and my friends at first thought she was fine. But two days later. We were brought to the hospital to visit her. She was in a coma and completely unrecognizable. Her parents told us to try to talk to her because she might be able to hear us but all we could do was cry. She died later that day. I don't think anyone knew how to properly help a bunch of 11 year olds grieve. Edit. We later found out she had died due to a heart defect. In 4th grade I had a sleepover with another boy who was more. Let's say. Developmentally advanced than me. I was a small kid. Always the smallest in my class. At night he grabbed me. Pinned me down face first. Pulled down my pajamas and up head me. I didn't scream. I just froze. It hurt but to be honest it didn't hurt too bad. I was just learning about sx and he told me that this is what adults do and I'm being the woman. I was curious at the time and part of me just wanted to go along. But also I couldn't resist since he was bigger than me and pinning me down. I've never told anyone. I just told my parents that he played too rough and I didn't want to play with him anymore so we never had him over and I never went back to his house. They believed that since I was a kind of soft child. Honestly. I've never written this out before. I don't think about it often. Maybe once a year. But when I do. Oh man does it hurt. My sister tried to commit suicide when I was 7 by cutting her arms legs and neck with a razor blade. My older cousins found her and hauled her into the driveway. Me and my sister grabbed towels for my parents. We waited 20 minutes for an ambulance. 
she survived and was sent to a group home. My parents were fighting. I was about 5 and my brother 7. Dad threw mum down the stairs and threw her university textbooks at her. Grabbed her face and hit her multiple times. My brother and I were crying. Didn't know what to do so we just watched. Edit, they separated 5 years later. Which was a bit late. Divorce was just finalized last month, woohoo. Close bracket. Fun fact about my dad. He forced my mom to marry him 3 days after meeting her in real life. He met her in the states but lives in Canada. Then when it came time to cross the border, she is an immigrant from Indonesia, he made her marry him. I didn't know this until this year. He's a real scumbag and I don't plan on ever rebuilding our relationship. My last foster mother gave me a reason to splash in the tub. Guess my 3 or 4 year old self needed taught not to splash water. She held my face underwater for what seemed a lot longer than it probably was. When I was younger like maybe 5 or 6 I was playing around with my brother in my bedroom who just learned how to walk. So we're just playing in there and my brother lost his balance and his fell on the sharp edge of my bed frame. The edge is so sharp it punctured a hole on my brother's head. He cried while blood was dripping down his head. My parents busted through the door and rushed into the ER. He has a little scar on his head to this day. When I was 9 years old I was almost kidnapped a block from my house. A van pulled over and the passenger said hey see me and then chased my friend and me. My friend was on his bike and got away easily. I ran for the corner and made it around. Luckily a neighbor was in their yard on the other side of a large hedge blocking the view of what was happening. The neighbor was deaf and didn't understand what I was upset about. I waited near the neighbor until the kidnappers got back in the van then I sprinted home staying shielded from the street by going through people's yards jumping fences etc. Flat out sprint during the last few hundred feet without cover to get to my parents house. The whole time I was running I was just waiting to see the van turn the corner and figure out where I live. My deaf neighbor very likely saved my life just by being outside. Losing my mum at 9. She was raising me mostly by herself and my birth father was not part of my life ever. She was in hospital for something that should have been simple but she had to stay overnight. The next morning my mum's partner and my uncle, mum's brother, turned up at the partner's parents place where I was. I was all excited because I only got to see my uncle for birthdays and Christmas. Then they sat me down and told me what happened. First time I know I just burst into tears. No build up or anything just heard the words from my uncle and I started crying. Been over 25 years now and I still get choked up and I struggle watching any show about foster kids or losing mums to this day. Had a babysitter hold my left hand against a lit burner because I was coloring with the wrong hand. Joys of being left handed. My mom screamed and threw the pencil out of my hand when I wrote. She would hit my hands. I started writing with my right hand at home and left at school. She thought she fixed me and was horrified when she saw me and my daughter both coloring with our left hands years later. She started scolding me for not stopping her. I kicked my mom out before she could traumatize my child. Edit for people asking why. My mom was raised by her grandmother and had me at 40. We had a 100 year generation gap because of the mentality of my great grandmother who believed that left handed people are evil and dirty. My mom often had very extreme punishments and views. It happened a few months after my mom got married to my stepdad when I was 7 or 8. My brother and I growing up were your typical kids we just played video games. Didn't do drugs. Steal. Etc. We did however do normal kid stuff that would get us into trouble. I remember the first time my stepdad disciplined us by shoving us both into walls and punching us a few times. Long story short it got worse over time and I just made myself numb to everything. My bio dad wouldn't let me live with him and my mom contributed to the abuse and gaslit us. Our extended family turned a blind eye and it didn't help that my mom is a compulsive liar. I've had another loss 4 months prior. But honestly the worst was dealing with the 13 days of my dad being diagnosed with a rare form of lymphoma. To his death that quick. 
We didn't know he had cancer and it spread so rapidly. The whole side of his family had cancer btw. I was 15. Two years ago. And it was honestly a horrible and early age to deal with it. I talk about my experience with loss whenever I have the chance to. And sometimes I feel like I'm seeking attention for it. But honestly. It's how I cope. Edit. Thank you for all of the support. I don't really have time to reply to all the comments. So I'm just saying thank you for being so nice. Hope you guys see this. It was a mental one. I was very young and I woke up to my dad yelling at my mom while she was sobbing for what felt like an eternity over the fact that she bought herself a lighter and didn't buy him one. They both smoke. It was from then on that I noticed my dad was an alcoholic and he hated us. About 3 weeks before my 7th birthday. My best friend was murdered by her dad. He went nuts one day. Killed the dog. Cut up all the furniture. Stabbed her 47 times. Tried to kill her mom when she got home from work. It was completely out of the blue. He was a really great guy. Never hit her or anything. He was non-vocal deaf. So no yelling either. But after he was sent to a mental hospital. It came out that he had been hearing voices. Which had to be ducking horrible. Since he'd been born deaf. Probably coming home from school to find my house empty. Then live with my teenage sister in that empty house for a few weeks. Then her parent came and picked me up and brought me to the new house. Was molested starting around age 4 by my grandpa. I didn't know that it was bad. I just thought it was supposed to be like our secret. I was so young I didn't even know. Not until I grew up a little more and he showed me a gun and said if you ever tell anyone. I'll kill myself before the cops can get me. I was still super young so that traumatized me pretty bad. I didn't want to be the reason why my grandpa died so I stayed quiet. This went on for years until I grew up more and had the choice to stay home or visit. Around 9th grade. It left me with this weird feeling whenever I have sx. I always feel that it's wrong and I'm dirty or tainted. It's an ugly feeling right in my chest and after I climax I cry. It sucks man. My mom took my dad and I to the park where she was planning on telling him that she was leaving him. I was told to wait in the car as I heard them yelling at each other. My mom then opened the car door. Told me she loved me and left me and my dad there. He tried looking for her but couldn't find her. Watching my mom walk away and out of my life at 7 years old gave me horrible separation anxiety. Edit. Hi so I posted this last night and woke up to tons of love and I'm just in shock to how much attention this has gotten because this was the first time I've posted on reddit. I've gotten a few questions so I'm gonna answer them here. After running away she had a boyfriend pick her up. I found this out years later after the incident. Yes I did see her again a year later because she tried getting split custody of me but failed. After that I would only see her very rarely. I wanna say thank you for all the nice comments. A dog ripped a part of my cheek off I looked in the mirror before I went to the ER and saw my exposed jaw bone. Edit it was a great day mutt and it was probably my fault for staring it down. I stayed the night in ER and only needed 16 stitches. I was very lucky that it didn't get infected because the wound was so deep. I have too many to count. But the first memorable one was around when I was in kindergarten. As any other elementary school goes. My school had a bathroom buddy policy to ensure that kids didn't just randomly go missing. My bathroom buddy was another little girl who I love to play with and show my toy animals to. One day. She told me she wanted to show me something too. But she could only do it in the bathroom. So I brought my little toy dolphin to surprise her. And she surprised me with my first experience with getting oral. I remember her asking me how it felt. And telling me to do it to her too but I didn't feel comfortable licking someone else's cooch. She made me do it anyway. Because that's what big girls do. Fast forward a couple decades. And I eventually told my parents. They knew about it. And it eventually became known that the little girl's mother brought home some real monsters. Colon. 
Felt like I was dying when I caught H1N1 swine flu in 2009 pandemic. Maybe I was. Could not breathe properly and had an autoimmune reaction that ruined my life. Left me with constant chronic severe leg pain when I was barely into my teens. Those three weeks of having that flu were traumatic indeed. Found out five years later I have Ehlers Danlos Syndrome. I was five years old and my grandma hit a car on the freeway. Both cars rolled but the driver of the other car wasn't wearing his seatbelt. He fell out the open window while it was rolling and was effectively smeared on the pavement by either our car or his car. I remember sitting on the curb while a first responder was evaluating to see if I was okay. But more than anything I remember the wife of the deceased man was screaming in agony at her meat crayon husband. I told my family I didn't remember a thing from the accident because I didn't want them to worry. Physically molested encouraged to be our ped at 4 by my older cousin older brother. Was made to believe it was my fault and blackmailed about it. Caused me a lot of shame growing up. And even now. I also remember my mom overdosing on Valium in the same time period. She survived. When my dad was in a severe road accident. While coming back from his job. The condition he was in while admitting him to hospital was really bad. That was a traumatic time not only for me but for my whole family. 5 years old. Much older stepbrother would come in at night to check on me every once in a while. I didn't really understand what was happening until I was 8 or 9. Sat on that until I was 11 and finally told my mom and his dad. I went to a party in the woods one night like a bonfire and me and my friend were really drunk then someone gave us some Xanax without us realizing it we both took it and the next thing I remember I wake up in a hospital bed. Most comfortable bed I've ever lain in but I overdosed that night and had my stomach pumped I couldn't eat a full meal without puking for like a week and I had intense heartburn for a month. I still don't completely remember that night. I've been kind of ashamed of it but figured this would help me get over it. On the night before my last day of third grade. My mom sent me to bed early because we were going to Joga Lake, local amusement park, as an end of year school trip. Being way too excited to sleep. I laid awake in bed to hear my dad arrive home drunk. I crept to the top of the stairs and listened to the progressively more angry voices. Him and my mom got in a fight. Where he pushed her, thankfully didn't cause any injuries. The cops got called and my dad was arrested that night. I don't think my younger brother or sister heard any of it. But it was my first realization that my dad was an alcoholic. It would take a couple more years to fully realize what that meant. S. Zool and physical abuse by my babysitter or coming home to my cat dead in the street. I forget what happened first. 7 was a rough age. I was the first one who saw my dad's dead body in the living room. I was pretty shook and was very surreal. From then on. I always checked if my mom or sister and even our dog are breathing and it's been like that for years. I had to be about 7. My brother had been stabbed and he had been home from the hospital a few days. Just me and him in the house. He runs to the bathroom and starts vomiting blood. I called my mom and an ambulance picked him up. I really thought he was going to die. When I was 4. A beefy 9 year old girl tried to strangle me. I was unable to wear turtlenecks or scarves until I did therapy with a therapist specialized in dealing with trauma almost 20 years later. First memory of existence. As far back as it goes. I remember being so small that the world looked huge. I was in the dining room because I loved crawling around under the chairs. Hear a bang and it's mom being thrown against the wall by my dad. I remember running over. Laughing and giggling because I thought it was a game. I grabbed at his leg to play along while he hit her. He turned around and punched me in the stomach. Hard. It was the strangest feeling because my mom started screaming but I couldn't hear her. I fell on my butt and what was weird was I didn't cry. I didn't even register it as an injury. Even though it hurt so much. I just remember I couldn't breathe in as much as I wanted to. I kept trying. And every time I got some air down. I'd use it to laugh a little. Gulp of air. Wide eyes. Little giggle. 
It was such a bizarre response but I can remember it clear as I'm sitting here. I just thought we were playing and I got hurt and I wanted to keep playing but I couldn't breathe. When I was around 7 I was hiking on a practically knife ridge with my dad and brother. Long story short. I drifted off mentally and walked right off the side. All I remember is clawing at the grass bunches. And to my fortune. My dad someone got in position to grab me. I grabbed his ring finger and twisted into a corkscrew which later had to be fixed at the hospital. I don't even think I thought much about it at the time. Walking home from middle school. There was a stretch with no sidewalk. So to stay out of the street I walked on the edge of some people's lawns. One day. One of these people came outside with a gun pointed straight at me and screamed at me about how he was going to kill me then and there. My fight or flight response was apparently to continue walking in a straight line. Never adjusting my speed. Thinking the whole time that I wouldn't live to see the end of the block. Wondering what it would feel like to die. Then when I got home. We called the cops. As they were interviewing me they overheard my parents talking about my dying grandpa's home care nurse. And one of the officers recognized the nurse's name. Turns out the guy who had basically lived with us for months. And was basically a part of our family at that point. Was a convicted child molester who had jumped bail during the trial. Working in our state now under the same name. So he got arrested and I never saw him again. That was a fun day.